Good morning, good morning, good morning. Derek Watson here, the angry dentist. Outside the paper shop. Big disaster in London last night. Lots of people run over. Policeman stabbed. Assailant shot. It's a grey old day, or as they call it now, white cloud. White cloud. Bitcoin stuck at $1,000, Dash is stuck at $100. Too much uncertainty over the, whether there's going to be a split in the blockchain, blockchain, in the Bitcoin blockchain. No dental news in the papers today. I haven't forgotten about my solution to uh, providing dentistry, you know, my ideal dental service. I'll be doing that. I'm going to uh, cover that when I've sort of finally got all the blocks in place. No, they pretty well are. But the trouble with these videos is you, you sort of, I do them and then afterwards I sort of I think, oh, I wish I'd mentioned that, you know. I should have, I should have included this and I, as I say, I don't uh, have any notes. <laughs> it's bad enough talking to the camera without having to juggle blooming notes in the style of Diana Scarrett. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so what are we going to talk about today? Ha ha ha! You'd think you'd run out of topics, wouldn't you? But I mean, you know, teeth, that's it. But no. Today I'm going to talk about nice. Nice. I'm old enough to remember, obviously, when it was invented and the reason why it, w it, it was brought about which is the government uh, had an out of control drug bill and they needed to do something about it and they didn't know what to do. So what they did was they realized that uh, by denying, well, they, they uh, had a go at denying some drugs to the public and uh, got into a lot of problems with the electorate over that. So they thought, you know, we'll, we'll get someone else to turn these things down. <laughs> so they set up NICE, which is a quango. And the Quango is a, stands for a quasi-autonomous, in other words, not really autonomous, non-governmental organisation. So you might think, well, okay, that's good. The government, you know, says that we shouldn't be involved in the in the these decisions. They've handed it off to a non-governmental organisation, but that's in fact not what's happened. What's happened is that the government does want to be involved in these decisions, does want to continue to make these decisions but they don't want to be seen to be making them. So what they do is they hand it off to a quango, or what is actually lately been called an arm's length body. And why is it a, a quasi-autonomous? Well, because it's they sort of pretend, they pretend that they have these non-governmental organizations, that, oh, they have their own constitution, they have their own rules, they have uh, members, you know, separate members non, that are not in government and uh, they reach their own decisions, we don't influence them. I mean, you know, okay, okay, so we might put in our case, you know, we might put in quite a detailed and, and uh, comprehensive case which sets out the sort of decision that we want them to make. And yeah, of course, we choose the members. Uh, yeah, but you know, but apart from that, they're absolutely impartial and they'll reach their own decision independent of government, which we will then demand that they put to us so that we can then either approve it or turn it down, you know, depending on whether they've got it right or wrong. So the thing is a total carve up. And uh, NICE is one of these bodies. And so the government wanted a, uh, an independent body to turn down expensive drugs, basically. Now, it, it wasn't quite as simple as that because you can't just turn, you know, say, oh, we're going to turn everything down in the same way as the sort of the Pfizer courts in America approve every request for to spy on someone you can't <laughs> they didn't want a nice body that uh, that just was overt in turning everything down so uh, what they did was they came up with a thing called a quali which is a quality adjusted life year and uh, so what they then they then set about the sort of the rather difficult job of trying to balance money the cost of money or the value of money against the value of um, a year of life uh, not just any old year of life, I mean a bloody good year, you know, I mean, a sort of, 
<laughs> a year, a year when uh, you know you won the lottery and uh, I shagged the cheeky girls would be like hundred, and then down at the bottom would be like unconscious on uh, a life support machine, and then they had to say so. Okay, so two fifties equals a hundred, or three uh, three twenty fives equals a seventy five, and that sort of thing. So. They, the trouble with nice is it started taking itself seriously <laughs> and uh, you know I mean why not I mean these people they're all important people they've had their ego stroke they're told they're gonna be on these very very important committees making life or death decisions and uh, they're put up in nice hotels and their their um, you know their expenses are paid and most of them are academics and so they quite like a day out of the university and and uh, to meet, you know, a few new people, and it's a bit cross discipline and everything. But I'd like to tell you about my experience with Nice, because Nice, as you know, was handed a few dental questions lately um, on, uh, you know, uh, dental health. The best way for public authorities to implement dental health, and then they followed that up with the best way for dentists to implement dental health. I mean, I mean the effing cheek of it. <laughs> When I tell you how it works, you'll see why why that gets me angry. Uh, and then also um, the best way to improve dental health in care homes and things like that. So, so they've had a few dental questions put it put in front of them. So the one where it was, uh, you know, how to improve dental health in dental surgeries, I decided I was going to go and watch it because it's open to the public. Anyone can go, in theory. So. <laughs> I said, yeah, you know, let me uh, reserve me a place. And that's when your problems start. This is absolutely when your problems start. And I, I'll just, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I'll just walk you through quickly how the problems I had. First of all, you have to reserve a place. This is not because they're short of space. They're not short of space. They, they'll be lucky. They are lucky if they have six people come along to watch. But the rules state that if you haven't reserved a space sort of three weeks before the meeting, then you can't come in. So that's the first stupid, stupid, pointless rule. Hang on. This is the only junction I'm likely to get killed at. So for those of you who are watching, in the expectation of seeing something spectacular, it's about halfway through the video. So you can fast forward to that bit tomorrow and, uh, and uh, well, I presume if the video... <laughs> I, on the other hand, if I get killed, I'm not going to post it, so, you know, you probably probably never see it. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, so, so if you're not on the list, you can't come in. Then, what's the next problem? When you go in, you're sat down the end of the room. So they sit in a big sort of a rectangle, as most big committees do, and you're sat down the end of the room. And you're given absolutely no paperwork at all. You're not given the agenda. You're not given. You're, you're just given the topic, which you know anyway, and the time that they start, and the time that they're going to finish. That's it. Uh, they talk amongst themselves. Uh, you're not allowed to talk to them, obviously, and then they are actually not allowed to talk to you either. So they sit there, just ignore you. I mean, they pretend that you're not there, because after all, that's what you're doing. You're observers. You're observing. So you don't have a clue. Um, you don't have a clue who they are, although if you go to enough meetings, obviously you do pick up who they are, you can sort of make notes. It's like a crossword puzzle, you know, two across. Who's the person, who's this person sitting two across from the chairman? <laughs> three down. Who's, the, who's the, the idiot professor that's sitting three down from the woman at the, on the corner? Um, and then you don't have any of their papers. You're not allowed access to any of their papers. So. So they can be saying, you know, uh, I'd like to discuss, uh, let's move straight to item four. And you don't know what item four is. I mean, this is not open government. This is, they sort of, someone at uh, NICE has said, well, we, we need to be open in our discussions. But they just don't even, they don't understand open government. I mean, we should be able to download their papers. At least after the event, you should be allowed to download their papers. But you're not. You're left to just sit there like an idiot in and guess. Then the other thing is you're not allowed to um, make any notes. You're not allowed to report anything. 
you're not allowed to take in a mobile phone or use it or a laptop or use it or a, a tablet or use it um, you can take in a piece of paper and a pencil and that's it so you are allowed to, to write or doodle or as I did just draw caricatures of the people that were there because really there's actually there's not much there to report but the reason they gave for this was that um, if we if we used a laptop, it would um, irritate the committee. That the clicking, the constant clicking of the keys, would irritate the committee. And this is despite the fact I'm sitting next to the secretary or near the secretary of the committee, who is typing all everything, on the minutes of the meeting in real time on a laptop. And that's because that excuse was just made up. It was just. Why can't we do this? Seems eminently reasonable. Why can't we do it? Well, you can't. Why not? I don't know. I'll just think up a reason. You know, you want a reason? You won't take no for an answer. Well, I'll just think up a reason for you. Just keep you happy. Just, that's your reason, okay? You can either like it or lump it. If you don't want to come, don't come. We don't care. We won't miss you. So, um, anyway, as far as the, uh, the evidence goes, they, they're very big on evidence. They're supposed to be evidence, completely evidence-based. And the problem they have, and it is a big problem in dentistry, is that there is no evidence. There is absolutely no... I don't know what Ken Eaton and the academics and the British Dental Journal have been doing all this time. Every time I've looked at the British Dental Journal, it's supposed to be full of academic research and scientific papers. But apparently, when it comes to anything useful, there's never any research, you know, not even the Cochrane, whoever Cochrane was, apparently he was brilliant and he did a lot of, brought a lot of research together in a way that is easily, you know, understandable to, uh, to Einstein. Um, but there's no evidence. So what they're doing there, they're sort of trying to consider how to do a job that none of them have ever done. Having said that, there, there is a dentist on the... Uh, there is a sort of, um, I'd hesitate to call him a token dentist because, no, 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 I wouldn't. He is a token dentist. There's a token dentist on the committee. Somebody I've never heard of, somebody I've never come across, somebody as far as I know has never contributed to any debate or uh, any dental policy or contributed anything towards dental treatment provision systems, never invented anything, never done anything. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he was. And he sat there for the most part, just sh shutting up and listening to all these academics who've never raised a, a mirror and probe in their lives, start pontificating about how to, um, you know, run a successful dental practice, a successful pre preventive dental practice. There's nobody from Denplan there, or uh, or DPAS, or pri preventive dental plan, whatever it's called, private plan practice plan because they, they basically they they walk around this problem you know they don't really uh, have anything to do with it so <clears throat> so and also it's a bit like the moral maze where they have like standing members of the, these committees so they have like a, they have one dentist and then they have an academic then they have an epidemiologist and a statistician then they have like a, Alan what's his name the TV doctor television personality Someone who's the chairman of another committee, perhaps on obesity, and then a token Trotskyist who keeps going on about how uh, uh, the system has to cater for the needs of um, transient Romanians, or it, it's, in fact, that's the only thing it needs to do. It, all it needs to do is cater for the needs of transient Romanians, because they are the people in the biggest need, therefore they are the top priority, therefore the whole of this country's health budget should be spent on people with the biggest need who are the transient Romanians or whatever ethnic group is currently favourite with the trots. So they've got no evidence. So what they do is they have an evidence session at which they decide that they've got no evidence. I mean, and I'm not joking now, they really have got, they've got no evidence. So this is a committee with a big problem, right? It's got no evidence and it's supposed to be evidence-based and it's sitting there and it's got to make a decision and it's got to be seen to be a wise decision and a decision that's robust and that will stand up some some sort of scrutiny and it's going to be based on nothing on literally on nothing 
so they scrape about they really they scrape about for just nothing and uh, and inevitably the results are laughable they are laughable and they'll get published they'll go into some report which will have a like a smart smarty title uh, and uh, a bit of a second division graphic design and that will go on the shelf of every academic and a commissioning body and that will be it you know so but you know that's the trouble in order to sort of keep the cost of the important drugs down they have to do an awful lot of work which is just rubbish you know it's just the uh, sand between the big boulders on the beach I don't think they've made any impact. I don't think they'll make any impact. They're certainly not going to make any impact on uh, oral health in care homes, which I think is is appalling and appalling for reasons that they won't even twig. Um, but um, in the audience, you know, we, we had quite a funny time in the audience. But the trouble is, like, <clears throat> these meetings, some of them, like the dental meeting I went to was in Manchester, right? Now... They say, oh, yeah, we hold the meetings all over the place. We, we've got an office in London, some of our meetings are in London, and that's true. But once they decide that a meeting is going to be in Manchester, then they're all in Manchester. It's not like they have one in Liverpool, one in Manchester, one in London. So you can you can uh, go around and, you know, everyone gets a chance to go to one. No, if, if you want to go to a particular series of meetings, then you always have to go to Manchester. <clears throat> and for me, where I am in Kent, near Canterbury, um, that's... It's difficult, you know, I mean, it's two days, really, out of my workflow, because I have to leave, <clears throat> I have to go to Manchester in the evening before, because they start reasonably early, <clears throat> and um, and stay overnight in a, in a cheap hotel, I mean, <clears throat> and in Manchester, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in Manchester, a cheap hotel is like, there, there's some weird, there's some very funny things go on in cheap hotels in Manchester, I can tell you. Let's just stay in your room and lock the door. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, especially in the city centre. But um, uh, yeah, so so and then obviously I'm up there bright and early in the morning. And then what happens is they they break for lunch and they have a big trolley full of sandwiches wheeled in because for them everything's free, all their travels free, hotels free, and uh, food is free and everything. But you have to buy everything, and they don't have a massive lunch hour. They don't, and because because we're invisible, because we're flies, they like they don't care of anything. They don't think about us at all. So they're like, oh, you know, well, we've run over fifteen minutes of lunch hour. It's all right if everyone if we just have half an hour for lunch. But of course, it's effing all right for you. You're going to have your, your sandwiches outside the door. Do you know what I mean? Your we are going to have to go out down 20 flights of stairs out through security find a sandwich shop grab a sandwich and bring it back just in time to see you all file back in again and say oh, where's it on the public you know the public on here they don't give us anything they didn't they didn't give us water they didn't um when uh, <laughs> we, we, we'd rushed out to buy all these sandwiches and when we came back we found that they hadn't eaten half of what they'd been given I said to the secretary, I said, why don't you, can't you just, you know, give us a few a plate of sandwiches or something? She said, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. Oh, no, no, it's all, you know, oh, no, I'd rather chuck them in the bin. I'd rather chuck all these lovely sandwiches in the bin than give them to you. That's what she said. <clears throat> and, the, and the public who are there, are, as I say, there were about six of us, but there was only one dentist. Now, considering this is a meeting about prevention in dentistry in dental practice you think that there might actually be more than me there but there wasn't so who were the other five well basically they were just people that had been sent there by vested interests and stakeholders and it's mainly commercial interests and they're not there really to see which way the wind is blowing they're just there to keep an eye on the people that they know that they they are lobbying outside the meeting and um, uh, to make sure that they don't say anything that might you know conflict uh, their their uh, funding and their grants that they're getting from all the toothpaste companies and the, the chewing gum companies uh, outside uh, outside this this venue, and sure enough, uh, they do very well out of it. You know, the, if you can get a public body to spend public money on giving away your toothbrush, you are minted. <laughs> I like the toothpaste, you're minted. If you can get a public official like Barry Cockroft to bring in a legislation that says that 
the only evidence-based bit of prevention that he can think of is to put fluoride varnish on teeth and you're a Johnson & Johnson rep, you are in the money, the mega money. You look at the amount of money that was spent on fluoride varnish after that advice came out. It eclipsed the drug budget, the NHS dental drug budget was eclipsed by the amount of money spent on one single thing, this stupid fluoride varnish, which apparently had to be applied to everything, you know, children, nurses, ceilings, everything. And it might as well have been for the amount that they used. I'm amazed they didn't sell it in a five gallon tub. And the other thing is that, you know, even what you see going on there is not is not what actually goes on. Because when the word got around that there was, I was there, that an actual dentist who might actually report back to the profession on what they were saying, they stopped saying anything. And when I found out, I, I tried to, and I thought this is funny because they're, they're, they're saying stuff but they're not saying anything. And it turned out that they had decided <clears throat> that the previous evening at dinner, that they would have a pre-meeting meeting. And this was off the record. I mean, this is totally, you know, back channels only, but they're all staying in the same hotel, so it doesn't make any difference to them. So what they do is they all get together. They have like what they call a breakfast meeting. And at the breakfast meeting, they decide everything, what, what they're gonna do, not, not in the public domain, out of the prying eyes of the public, the, the, the gallery. And then they decide how it's gonna go and then they come along and then they put on a big charade during the day for the, for the people and the public and the people like me. So in fact, what they, what, even what you can see them doing is not actually what they're doing, okay? So the next time you hear nice says this or nice says that, you can think, well, that is worth nothing because that's exactly what their opinion is worth, is worth nothing, okay? Your opinion is worth more than their opinion. I'll tell you that. Okay, I'm off to work. Have a nice day.